Welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. Today we're going to have a look at onboarding MindSphere um, assets. Uh, and when we talk about an asset, that is the actual hardware that it is on site um, collecting your data. So to start off with, we need to, to start the onboarding uh, procedure. And that is on the, the Asset Manager app. So select view your assets and then select where you want to create your um, connection. Okay, so here I have some assets already set up, but um, in the top section I'm going to set where I onboard it. So I create an asset. And then here you'll see, start to see all of the different options for, for connecting to hardware out in the field. In this example, we're going to connect to the MindConnect IoT 2040. Select that and click Create. And now you have to give it a name. And it's up to you. This, this name doesn't appear on Fleet Manager you can put location and, and, and whatever you want in there but I'm gonna leave it like this um, click Save and then you'll see this option down here so this connectivity this is where we need to um, uh, download our onboarding key as you can see on the right hand side this shows you the the label of the device that you would ha have out in the field so you, you do need that information so for this particular device I can see that my serial number and then click Save um, we need to get this um, onboarded to start off with so if we click on the uh, the little settings button um, and then you can you can see down here your, your different connections so if you were connecting to a PLC with the second Ethernet port on the um, IOT 2040 then you can untick DHCP and put all your settings in there um, and again to keep things simple if you've got a DHCP server on your switch then you can just leave that set to DHCP and then click save once you've got those changes you can see here download onboarding key so you need to download the key so there you can see your onboarding um, key. This needs to be downloaded to a memory stick and then um, you insert that into the device and monitor this onboarding screen. As you can see, once you plug the, the USB memory stick um, into the uh, IoT 2040, it will go through a, a sequence of lights but when it's connected you'll, you'll see the three green lights come on and if you go back to your asset um, you will see the online and onboarded functionality so we need to add data sources but before we do that um, it's probably worth just checking that your device has the latest firmware on so a really nice feature of the MindConnect boxes from Siemens is you can check to see if you require a firmware upgrade so you can see here um, this is the, the current firmware and if I add the the option to upgrade um, this this button here would be available now we've connected to the MindConnect 2040 the next stage is to establish our connection to the controller and in this example we're going to connect to a level controller so the the data source is each device that you're connecting to 
So you'll need to go onto that device and get your COM port settings and then for each other device that you, you add you need to make sure that the settings are the same. So we're looking at the board rate and the parity and the stop bits. That needs to be the same. Then for each individual device they need to have a separate Modbus address. So for this particular device we have a Modbus address of 1. So we'll add the data source and then you have up here your protocols. So if we're connecting to a, a, a Siemens PLC we can read directly from um, uh, the, uh, the Profinet port if you like and then we can read the data blocks. But we're looking at Modbus, there's a few options here. So we've got Modbus TCP or Modbus RTU. So we're going for the RTU. Um, the read cycle, uh, I've got that at one minute. Com port 1 is the top left hand corner and we're not 232, we're 485. So 232 we can only connect to, to one instrument and then this is these are the next parameters that are quite important so we need the parity to match the stop bits is nearly always uh, one and the data bits are always eight but the parity tends to change quite often um, and for this example we're going to use even and then these are response timeouts leave them at the default um, you may need to edit these if you have a lot of instruments connected to, to one master and we just need to give that a name and a description so this is going to be a, a level controller and you can put a description in there and that's added that so save and then when we click on apply changes that will download it to the device. Now we've done that the next stage is to add the uh, information that we want to read from from the device and for Modbus that is um, held in um, certain registers so we have the coil register the input output register and a lot of the times um, uh, stuff is just all put into the holding register and the holding register supports what we call real words floating point words so that's what we're going to have a go at setting up next for the connected instruments you're going to require the Modbus memory map and for this particular level device everything is held in the holding register so the holding register starts with a 4 so any of these here um, if you were using a program called ModScan you'd have to select the holding register and then put this address in and it's a very similar process on MySphere so we're going to have a look at reading the head on this particular device and I can see this is a floating or a real uh, double word and my memory location is 3206 so if we go to um, MySphere we need to edit and then add a data point give this a name the units are important later on my particular device is programmed in millimeters and then we select double the function we've already discussed this is the holding register the slave number if we go back to when we set the um, device up this was slave 1 and the start address is the Modbus address so for this one it's 3206 and we come down to here and we need to tell it what type of value it's reading well we've got that from the table it's a floating point and then this offset is if your memory uh, map is offset by one which sometimes happens with Modbus but for this particular device it, it's not so we click accept and then save and then apply changes and of course as I previously stated 
applies changes, that configuration is now being downloaded to the device. So what I've done here is I've purposely given the um, the Mind Connect the wrong address so you can see what happens when you get a bad data transmission. So you have to give this about a minute to update because that's what you've programmed for it to do and then you can see here read operation has a problem. Uh, you can interrogate the USB, you can plug a USB into this Mind Connect box to get more information but I'm pretty sure I know what I've done so if you have a look on the screen now you can see you would see that orange light so what I'm going to do is now put the address so it's correct so I'll put that back to 3206 accept and I'll apply that change and after a minute we should see that light go green so I've just refreshed the screen because I couldn't be bothered to wait and if we go on to here we can see the health status is now green and um, it has read the Modbus information from that device. So that's how you onboard a, um, a MindConnect IoT 2040. The MindConnect Nano is more or less exactly the same um, in, in, in methodology but obviously a bigger box with more memory. So now we have a secure connection all the way down to, to the MyConnect 2040 and it's reading my instrumentation parameters. So I'm going to add more instrumentation parameters to this and in the next video I'll show you how you can connect those to the visualization side of MindSphere so we can start logging that data and using it in applications. So thanks for listening. Don't forget to hit the like button and please um, share this um, channel with your colleagues and friends. Your support is very much appreciated.